let us uh, now go to the first module which is introduction. Engineering thermodynamics um, originated as a subject in mechanical engineering uh, with the start of the industrial revolution. So, basically industrial revolution heralded the era when, um, when things which until then uh, were being done uh, using manpower um, uh, were beginning to be uh, automated and being done with things like steam. It was realized that steam could actually be used to run uh, machines, uh, not only steam engines, but many other uh, machines or uh, it can be used to operate many things which until then had to be done with extensive manpower. Okay. So, basically this steam was generated uh, by burning coal and it could be used to run machinery to do many, many things. Okay. So, that heralded the industrial revolution and since the time actually uh, engineers, especially, especially mechanical engineers uh, are always looking at the efficiency of the device. Basically, the expectation is that I burn a certain amount of coal or for instance, let us say I burn 1 kilogram of coal, I know the calorific value of the coal. Okay. So, what I expect to get as, uh, as output uh, work from, uh, from the machinery is something which is close to this calorific value. So, if the calorific value of coal is let us say uh, 25 megajoules per kilogram, then I expect to get uh, when I burn 1 kg of uh, coal, I expect to get 25 megajoules of uh, work from the device that is, uh, that is under ideal circumstances. So, mechanical engineers you know would always measure the amount of work they were getting from the device and then compare it with the calorific value of the fuel and try to see you know uh, uh, where the energy is being lost. If it is not coming as output work, it must be lost somewhere. So, they always were trying to improve the efficiency of the devices that convert heat into useful work. Okay. So, basically we are burning coal and giving heat to a, as input to a device and we are getting work from the device. <coughs> so, that is that has always been the pursuit of engineering thermodynamics, particularly mechanical engineering thermodynamics. Okay. We give so much heat to the device, we get so much work from the device, <coughs> what is the efficiency of the device? and how do we actually try to improve. So, these are the uh, questions that mechanical engineers were asking and they realized during these uh, pursuits that certain things seem to be uh, universal. Okay, uh, that you cannot really uh, improve the performance of a device beyond a certain level and uh, they also realize that you know uh, other things like if an engine operates in a cycle, the net heat that you are giving and the net work that you are getting always seem to be the same or equal to each other. So, they realize that certain laws, uh, universal laws seem to be applicable and uh, of course, these were realized based on experiments, but now these laws are considered to be fundamental laws of the universe actually. They are stated without proof, but they are accepted to be fundamental laws of the universe. Okay? Now, Peter Atkins, a well-known uh, chemistry professor who has written a lot of uh, books on uh, not only on physical chemistry, but also thermodynamics and so on, um, kind of nicely states uh, uh, sardonically, you know, uh, laws of thermodynamics. Okay? So, first law basically says that heat can be converted into work, okay? as we just discussed. And uh, he says the second law, according to him, the second law says, but completely only at absolute zero. Meaning, if you want to convert all of the heat into work, you need to be able to do it at absolute zero temperature. Okay. And the third law, according to him, which is universal, is that absolute zero is unat un unattainable. Okay. So basically, he sums up the laws of thermodynamics in this manner: heat can be converted to work but completely only at absolute 0 and absolute 0 is unattainable. Okay? Um, most of you may also be familiar with uh, Murphy's laws and uh, reasons why things go wrong. There is a very uncanny uh, resemblance between Murphy's laws and uh, the laws of thermodynamics. For instance, one of the Murphy's laws that uh, you may encounter is something like this, for something to become cleaner, something else must become dirtier. Okay? This you may consider uh, as a colloquial form of the principle of increase of entropy. So, we actually reduce the entropy at some place by making it cleaner, but that comes with a certain price. So, when you, when you clean something, you clean the particular object, but the surroundings become dirtier. 
okay so uh, when you sum up the increase in the level of cleanliness of the object and the increase in level of uh, dirtiness of the surroundings and add them together the uh, uh, it turns out that overall the universe still becomes dirtier and this does not balance out the other at best under the best of circumstances this may balance the other but under most circumstances overall universe will become dirtier Okay, that is the uh, general observation uh, that we see in uh, in real life in nature okay the second statement probably we are all familiar with left to themselves things tend to go from bad to worse for instance you know this is like our room uh, room that we occupy our office space you know on day one the, the office is pick and span but as the uh, time goes along you know the office becomes more and more cluttered and it requires an enormous effort for us to uh, put it back into the shape in which it was said when we actually occupied the office on day one. Okay, So, this is also something that we are familiar with in everyday life and uh, these sort of statements actually have very uncanny resemblance to uh, the principle of increase of entropy which says that the entropy of the universe uh, at best remains the same or always increases. Okay, so there are many um, uh, nice uh, uh, connections between uh, Murphy's laws and uh, why uh, and uh, the laws of thermodynamics. You can actually read the book and uh, probably uh, appreciate it even more. So, in engineering thermodynamics, as I mentioned, we are interested uh, in the conversion of heat into useful work. So, that is the primary objective of engineering thermodynamics. Although, um, this seems to uh, suggest that you know we are looking only at direct engines, meaning only engines that produce work. Whatever ideas we develop are also applicable to reverse engines like refrigerators, which absorb or which take in work and do something useful for us. Okay? Now, in the context of converting heat to work, we will try to answer the following questions in this, uh, in this course. The first question obvious question is how much of the input uh, heat is converted into work by the engine under consideration. So, this relates to the calorific value of the fuel and the amount of heat we are supplying. How much of it is actually converted to useful work by the engine? That is the first question that we will uh, try to answer. The second question is everything else remaining the same. What is the maximum possible work output? Okay, uh, understandable. This suggests that the amount of work that we are getting normally from the engine will not be equal to the amount of heat that we are giving it. So, that being the case, what is the maximum possible work output? It may seem that the maximum possible work output should be equal to the heat input that we are giving the engine, but uh, quite interestingly, the laws of thermodynamics tell that that is not the case. In fact, the maximum is nowhere close to the amount of heat that we are putting in. Okay? So, this question is a very subtle question. At first sight, it may seem like the answer to this question is uh, the heat that we are giving is the maximum possible work output. The law of thermodynamics states that that is not the case. Okay? The third question that we will try to answer is what are the factors that affect the performance of the engine? In other words, it is putting out certain amount of work. I am also able to determine what the maximum should be. So, what I am trying to do is bridge the two. Why am I not getting the maximum possible? So, what are the factors that affect the performance of the engine and by how much? So, if we have uh, a clear understanding of uh, individual factors which are contributing to this difference, then we can address these factors one by one and try to uh, improve the performance of the engine so that we are we try to get as close to the maximum possible work output as possible. So, these are the three questions that we will uh, try to answer and we will we will develop a framework which helps us answer all these questions and uh, try to uh, get insights into the nature of uh, these processes. Okay? So, the framework that we develop will not only be useful for analyzing direct engines, meaning engines that convert heat into useful work, but also engines that utilize work to produce a useful effect like a refrigerator for instance or a heat engine or a I am sorry or a heat pump which are called reverse heat engines. So, these take in power and then they uh, do something useful for us. So, a refrigerator as I said before uh, keeps the refrigerator compartment 
uh, at a low temperature thereby preserving the food and other things that we keep there. Uh, heat pump on the other hand which is uh, used uh, widely in, um, in western countries uh, particularly colder countries uh, and this is used during winter time to pump heat from the outside ambient which is at a low temperature into a dwelling or a house and maintain it at a comfortable temperature. So, we actually pump the heat from the cold ambient into the house which is at a higher temperature and maintain it at that higher temperature. So, that is also a reverse heat engine which absorbs the work. As you know normally heat will not flow from the outside ambient which is at a colder temperature to a house which is at a higher temperature. So, this has to be accomplished by supplying power or energy to a device. Okay. So, the framework that we develop uh, is equally applicable to both. Although we most of the times our discussions center on direct engines because they are for probably little bit more intuitive to understand. Uh, keep in mind that the framework is very general applies both to direct and reverse heat engines. We will uh, discuss the uh, uh, notion of uh, macroscopic approach in the next lecture.